Hey squad, welcome back. Now today's video is prepared for those of you who use an audio interface with a single headphone output. Now for many of you who record and produce in a smaller setting, maybe in a home studio or some other project studio, you might use a small audio interface such as this. This one here is a Focusrite Scarlett Solo. Now it's got a single mic input, it's got a single line instrument input, and it's got a single headphone out and that's what we're going to be focusing on if you've got an interface such as this and as a producer or engineer recording your artist you maybe want to have a different mix in your headphones to that of the artist and that's impossible to achieve if you're both being fed by the same headphone output now i'm going to show you in this video exactly how you can queue up the mixes for your headphones as the sound engineer recording engineer and a different mix to the headphones for the artist without having to spend any extra money at all. Now, before we jump into this, do remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're actually feeling what's going on here. And remember to follow me on my other social media platforms. Okay, well, let's get into it. Okay, so the whole point of this exercise is to give you, the engineer producer, more control in your studio. As I said in the introduction, we've only got a single stereo headphone out on the audio interface and you want to have some independence in as much as you want to be able to hear a different mix in your headphones compared to what the vocalist or other performer is hearing and this is how you're going to do it now i've got a logic arrangement here and i've got an instrumental already brought in because for many of you you're going to be recording vocals to a pre-bounced or mastered instrumental and you can use the same principles anyway for a production where you've got all of the elements the midi parts and the audio parts all lined up in tracks along here but i'm just using a pre-bounced instrumental just for the demonstration but the principles um, are exactly the same in terms of getting the results we're looking for so this here is the is a beat or instrumental this here is our mic channel now if we come up here to preferences audio we'll see that the input and output device is the scarlet solo usb all right now that's got two ins and two outs that's all it's got and a single headphone connector now what we need to do is create what's called an aggregate device and i've done a video on this before a link will be on the screen if you want to go deeper into that especially if you want to be tracking like a full band drums and all of that sort of thing and you need multiple ins and outs that one is definitely one you want to be checking out but for our small setup we're thinking about just a solo vocalist and an engineer working together and the engineer producer wants to hear a different mix that, that's what this video is about okay so what we want to do is to create our aggregate device so you can either come up here to the spotlight search icon which is that magnifying glass there or use the key command command spacebar and that will open up the search bar for you and all we're going to type here is audio midi setup so the whole string you want to type is audio midi setup but the first thing that comes up um, is this one so we're going to click on that this is what we want to open all right this is the unit okay so this is where you set set up your audio preferences for the overall mac computer and we want to create what as i said a combined aggregate device so we're going to hit this plus just down here and create aggregate device and we can now select what we want to combine together for our aggregate device now i'm going to start off with my scarlet usb and then i'm going to add my built-in output as you can see on the screen logic has picked up that this new aggregate device has been created but before i hit use i'm going to make sure that i name this so i'm going to just call it solo plus built in that makes it easier to identify it and i'm going to just hit use here use at the top here you've got the clock sources being generated by the scarlet usb we're operating at 44.1 kilohertz we can change that if we wanted to the built-in output has drift correction ticked there i'm using both the ins and outs on the scarlet but i'm only using the built-in output so that would be the speaker or the headphone out on the imac which i'm using right here now i'm not going to use the mic built-in mic any of these i'm just leaving those off 
all right the other thing is if you selected these in the wrong order what you'd end up with is something like this so we can grab that and we can pull that over here you'll end up with the built-in output first and then scarlet second i'd say you should always go with your your external device as your clock source so i'm always going to put my external device first all right and it automatically changes there and as you can see uh, inputs one and two outputs one and two and for the built-in we've we have no inputs we've only got outputs it'll all make sense in a minute okay and that's done there now right so we come out of this except of that we come back to logic we come up again to preferences audio and i'm just going to select aggregate device again just to make sure it's fully selected there we are and apply great okay so now that we've created our new aggregate device the instrumental naturally play out of the stereo out x on the keyboard to pull up the mixer you'll see right here we've got stereo out so so far we've got instrumental we've got the mic but stereo out and both of these the instrumental and the microphone are feeding through to stereo out now what i'd like to do as a producer engineer i would like to have the instrumental coming to me at a different volume compared to what the vocal performer is going to be hearing in order to do that i need to come over here and i need to come to send bus and i'm going to go all the way down to bus 32 because it's completely out of the way and i'm going to set this to pre-fader now the reason i'm doing that is i don't want the vo this volume fader to affect the amount of signal being sent through to my bus all right so this is the bus i've just created right here i'm just going to call this phones 2 okay and i'm going to double click on this dial and i'm going to type zero in here so we're at unity gain and it's pre-fader the channel fader will not impact on how much signal going through to phones too so let's just hop over to the mixer again we've got our instrumental we've got our mic we now have phones two phones two will now output to outputs three and four i hope you're following anything being sent to stereo out will output on the scarlet anything being sent to outputs three and four will output to the headphone socket or the speakers on my Mac computer and that could be a laptop or your desktop or whatever you're using um, that's what's happening here so I'm just going to double click on stereo out I'm going to delete and press return just to make this a bit clearer so now we've got outputs one and two I'm going to call this solo one and two and the reason it's called solo is because the device itself is called Scarlet Solo and I'm going to double click here and I'm going to call this iMac three and four okay so that's a lot clearer so now if i was to play back my instrumental you will see that the instrumental is playing here it's feeding through naturally to the solo one and two which is our stereo out if i pull that down you'll see the volume of that go down but because we've got this bus setup aux setup We've got a signal still feeding through to the phone's bus, which has totally independent control. Okay, so now I can adjust how much I want to hear because my headphones as the engineer producer, I've got my headphones connected to the headphone socket on the iMac. The performer has their headphones connected to the solo. So if the performer wants to hear more music, they raise this. If I want to hear less music, I drop this okay cool right so that's the music bit now it's often the case that i'm might be working with someone who doesn't actually want to hear their vocals coming back through the headphones when they're putting down their vocals mainly rappers i find this with of course as an engineer i want to be able to hear what's going on even if they don't want to hear it so this is what you do you come to the mic channel and you make sure the mic is still going through to the stereo out you come up here again and you send to bus 32 your phones once again you're going to double click on this dial and you're going to set it to zero which is 
Unity Gain. And you're going to set this to pre-fader so that the volume fader here does not affect the amount of signal that is being sent through to your bus. All right, so I'm going to bring the bus volume back up to about here. Okay, so as soon as I hit the input monitoring on here, one, two, I begin hearing my voice coming back to me on the headphones. And of course, my artist doesn't want to hear that. I'm going to arm the track as well for recording. Now, to remove the signal from getting to the artist, all you need to do is pull this volume down. That volume fader has been pulled down, and now no signal is actually going through to the artist's headphones. However, me as an engineer, I'm still hearing it. So let's go over to the mixer. And as you can see here, let's put that, let's put this back up. Okay. There we go. And this is a good representation of what's going on. Remember once again, this is what's being fed through to the artist. This is what's coming through to me as the engineer producer. If I now pull down the volume fader for the artist. Okay. Here we go. Nothing's going through to their headphones, but I'm still getting a nice strong signal. If I play back the instrumental, the artist is receiving a nice strong volume of the instrumental. I can adjust that over here if it was a bit too loud. Okay. I'm still getting a nice steady volume. If I wanted to bring mine down, I'll just come here and I'll bring that down. Now remember, this is where all of the signals from the different tracks are being grouped together and then sent over to, to the engineer's headphones. All right. Now, let's say, for example, as an engineer, I wanted to hear more vocal and less instrumental. Let's play back. I'll pull the instrumental volume down here. And as you can see, it's dropping down right here all the way out. I'm going to ease it up until I'm satisfied. Let's say there. And now the volume of the vocal, I'm talking into the mic. As you can see, it's nice and loud. OK, so I can take it all the way down. And as you can see, nothing's going through to the headphones and take it up here you know so this is where you'd set your balance for how much of each individual signal you'd want to go through to your headphones as a sound engineer okay now again this provides a solution when you're queuing up uh, different headphone mixes and once you get used to it it can really help in terms of the creativity because of course if the vocalist loves to perform without hearing themselves back in the headphones and you're stuck with just hearing the music and not hearing their vocals over the track it's very difficult to really make a good judgment as to whether or not the performance itself is of a good standard but by using this method it will definitely make a lot of difference for you so let me just record something real quick this is a very short recording just a test vocal to demonstrate how we are going to use this aggregate device in our exercise okay so there's our recording okay that's done now i want to continue to record on this track as my mic track i'm going to move this recording down to another track so all i'm going to do here is i'm going to use the key command command d all right to duplicate the track pull this down and i'm going to title this vocal one okay take the input monitor off take the record arm off leave the input monitoring on there now and now i can bring the volume up so the artist can now hear the performance this is a very short recording just a test vocal to demonstrate how we are going to use this aggregate device in our exercise right great now both the artist and the engineer can hear this because it's still going through to the headphones bus and it's going through to the stereo out okay and what i'll do at this point is i would just simply duplicate these vocal tracks maybe i'll create about four of them and then i'll title them vocals two three and four okay and they're all set up to give me the engineer a completely different mix to the artist now hopefully that makes sense to you and hopefully it will add to your recording process now if you run into any issues with this drop me a note in the comment section and i'm sure we'll be able to figure things out
great stuff. I really do hope you found the video useful. If you did, drop me a line in the comment section, like the video and subscribe to the channel. This will really help me out. Now remember to support me at dospeeds.com as well as on my social media channels. And finally, switch on that notification bell so just like the rest of the MTTC squad, you'll find out as soon as my next video drops. Until next time, I'm Dr. Deuce. Peace.